in at a verse of scripture, the Lord was giving his disciples instruction. Turn it down, please. This one. Matthew chapter number 10. And uh, the Lord was giving his disciples instructions. And this prophetically carries way on over during the time of the tribulation. It's obvious if you read the verses before it and after it. But he's giving them good instruction for what they'd face in their time. And then you and I apply it to us spiritually now. Look what he says. Matthew chapter 10. And uh, uh, verse number 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep. See that word as? One of the best words for understanding the Bible is as. As and like. Every time you see like and as, he's teaching you something. Behold, I send you forth as what? Sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So he said, I'm sending you forth in the midst of wolves. And what you're supposed to do is to be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove. I want to preach this morning on this subject. How sheep ought to behave in wolf country. The Lord knew that what conditions that we would face in this world. It hadn't caught him by surprise. He knew every persecution, every martyr, every bit of flack that people got from preaching, living right, serving the Lord, and he told them, he said, I'm sending you like sheep in wolf, in the midst of wolves. And he told them what to do. Now, I won't talk about that for a little while this morning. He wanted them to know it, and he wants them to realize what we know, that the whole world lieth in wickedness. The early church looked at this right. The early church, up until the last century really, looked at the church, uh, the world like we are on enemy territory, we're, the world's against us and we're against it, and we have no fellowship with the things of this world, and that we're just pilgrims and strangers passing through. There's a false doctrine crept in our churches today, and that's where all of this mega preachers and jets, millions of dollars, we're raining now. That's where all this stuff, and, and the, 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 where that comes from is a belief in post-millennialism, which means there is no literal thousand year reign on this earth, but that we are ruling and reigning with Christ now for a, quote, indefinite period of time. And that's why you hear all this kingdom theology and kingdom preaching and, and we're going to step on the devil's head and we're going to take back what he stole from us and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. All that kind of thinking comes from this idea that we are reigning now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not reigning with Christ now. The Bible said if we suffer with him now, we'll reign with him later. Now the day's going to come when the kingdom is going to be here. And buddy, we'll, we'll rule and reign with Christ. But we won't need a private jet and we will not need gold-laced faucets in our house or spigots on our bathtub or anything like that. Brother, we're going to live in a gated community after that's over with. Uh, if you ever wanted to live in a gated community, you're going to one day. Amen. And buddy, it, it, nobody can get in that place but those that are saved by the grace of God. Now, let me say two things about it this morning. Then I'll say two more things. Number one, I'm going to talk about the nature of sheep endangers them. The very nature of a sheep gets it in trouble in wolf country. Sheep are very timid and defenseless. Um, yeah, have you thought about almost every animal there is has some kind of defense mechanism. They can defend themselves. A bird, if you try to get it, can fly away. A skunk can squirt you if you try to, try to, try to get it. If, if you try to fight a chicken, they can claw you. They can fly a little bit uh, to get away. A squirrel can run away. But sheep have no means of defense. They can't fight back. 
All they could do is just stand there. That's why the Bible said he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And God compares me and you to sheep. The very nature of sheep endangers them in wolf country. As a matter of fact, sheep are for their size. This is an awful indictment on us. But sheep are, for their size, the dumbest animal in the world. A sheep's brain is very little compared to its, its body. And God compares us to that. Me, me, me. Just one drop, dude. Uh, have you ever known any church people to do dumb things? Have you ever done any dumb things? Amen. Well, you know why? God compares us to sheep. I mean, sometimes it blows my mind how dumb Christians can be. And I am one. I've done some dumb things. But it, it, it's, 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 it's startling. It's, it's absolutely mind-boggling. They're like, they're like that woman. They said uh, uh, she went in and she kept watching her neighbors and she thought they was up to something. And finally, uh, uh, she went in and stuck in their house and found something and, and it was a, uh, uh, got her bag of cocaine. And she got this bag of cocaine and she still said, I knew they were selling drugs and called somebody to go over there and burn their house down or something uh, so that they wouldn't know she stole their, their, their stuff. And she called them and it was a undercover agent that she called and, and got her busted, of course. And then she found out that cocaine was grated cheese, Mexican cheese. And so uh, that's as a, as a dumb crook right there. And I thought about that and I thought that's how dumb uh, that, that people, people do some mighty, mighty dumb thing. Like that woman up in the mountains, she called the, the DOT and she said, now y'all got to come down here. She said, there's a sign up there. There's a sign up there that said, deer crossing. She said, please come and take that down. There's deer getting killed up here and they're getting run over all the time. Y'all take that sign down. And some of you, that went right through over your head right there. I can tell that. Now, that shows how God <laughs> compares us to sheep. It, I mean, that's the way we are sometimes. Hadn't you done some dumb thing? The nature of sheep endangers them. Somebody sent me one another day. Uh, on their on your phone, and it said uh, this blonde was going to church, and she kept watching her phone, watching her phone, and her phone said no service. And she thought they called church off, turned around, and went home. Uh, that's right, that's right. Sheep, the nature of sheep endanger them. Sheep are easily frightened. Uh, a jackrabbit can jump up, and uh, they can panic. Like if you got if if a flock of sheep's out here. Uh, 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 something jump up out of the bushes and one will jump and the other will jump and the other will jump and the whole flock can take off running over nothing. That's so much like church people. That is so much. One church member can be upset about something. They tell somebody else. They tell somebody else. I had a friend of mine tell me, uh, uh, a friend of mine pastored a church in another state and they uh, they had some problems. They had some problems. They overcome it and kept doing good. And somebody, I run into somebody. They said, man, that church has gone down. They said, said half the church is left there ain't nobody going there no more the spirit's dead and I went down there to preach it was in Florida and I went down there to preach and it was packed out and they shouted nearly the roof off the building and that shows how one person can put poison in another person's mind and in another person's mind and then another person's mind and they get cheated out of the blessing. They give The whole flock panics over nearly nothing. Amen? I'm telling you, uh, they, they'll come in and say, listen, uh, we've got to change. Churches like ours can't exist no more. Uh, we've got to go with the trends and we've got to go with the times. Paint the ceiling black. Uh, uh, get rid of the pulpit. Take my towel. Bring the smoke machines in. Well, that, and everybody panics and panics. Let me tell you what the Lord said one time. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell ain't prevailing against it. Buddy, we may go through hard time, but don't panic, people. Help is on the way. Let me tell you this morning, thank God, the nature of sheep gets them in trouble. They have a tendency to wander off from the flock. The Bible said in Isaiah 53, 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. They can't, they, they can't get it through their head. You're supposed to stick with the bunch. They think, I can miss church and it don't bother me. I can, I can stay. Matter of fact, I don't even have to go to church. I'll be fine. And they forget that verse that says, 
Remember the banana? When it left the bunch, it got skinned. That's in my Bible I'm going to write. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I'm telling you something, brother. You hear me today? Uh, their, their very nature endangers them. Sheep have no sense of direction. Uh, they can't get back to the fold. When they get lost, they have no clue which way to go. They have no idea. I mean, they, they, they don't understand. They don't understand. They they go trick-or-treating with the devil mask on. That's how dumb they are. I mean, they're so easily deceived, so easily tricked. I'm telling you, pastor in a church in 2017, it's like a giant nursery. Uh, uh, that's, that's what it feels like. And, and everywhere, so we should be way on down the road spiritually from where we are this morning. We ought to be way on down the road of walking with God. You shouldn't have to continually repeat the base, elementary thing of living right. But sheep have a tendency to, to be deceived easily like that. Uh, first thing you know, they'll, they'll go to a Halloween party. You never know. They'll do dumb things like that. Easily deceived. Now let me say also about the location of the sheep. The location is in wolf country. The location is in wolf country. You remember this. We are not ruling with Christ now. Uh, we are the king, you say, well, we're in the kingdom. We are in a spiritual kingdom of God right now. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are in a spiritual kingdom. There is no literal, visible, physical kingdom of Jesus on this earth right now. Now, when people get them too confused, kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, they can't get it figured out. So they get this thing in here. Oh, yes, here I'm the great so-and-so, and our church is taking over the world, and the hill song's going to come, and it's going to spread throughout the universe, and we're going to turn everybody to God, and we're going to have a love fest, and we're going everything's going to be great, and we'll, we'll even have Halloween, but if you stick Jesus in there somewhere, it'll be all right. I mean, they're so dumb like that. And I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, they don't understand we are all on enemy territory. The old folks didn't look at it like people look at it now. The old folks looked at it like they killed our Savior. They persecuted him. He said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. And they expected persecution from the world. You know how the old folks look forward to it? You'll never hear this on the song. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. So the angels beckon me from heaven's open shore and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I'm telling you something. God put something inside me. When I got saved, there's been a little tug that lets me know I'm a pilgrim, I'm a stranger. I'm just passing through. I ain't gonna get my roots too deep down here because our home's up there, people. Our home's up there. Get that through your head. Now, Lord blesses us, and we get some blessings along the way, but th we're not ruling down here. We're not. We're in wolf country. We're in wolf country. I think some people had the wolves scheduled to sing this morning. I think some went to wolf church this morning. I don't know, but it's bad. Amen? Somebody said, wolves don't lose sleep over the opinion of sheep. We're not affecting the devil or his demons. Amen? Daniel was in wolf country when they put him in that lion's den. The Hebrews were in wolf country. Paul and Silas were in wolf country when they locked them up and put them in jail. You know, by today's standards, Paul, the apostle Paul would have been considered a flop in the ministry. No buildings, no buses, no, no school. No seminary, no college degree, no, no big ministry, no TV, no radio, no internet, no nothing. But I'm telling you, that man made a mark for God on this earth that this world never got over yet. The Apostle Paul, the greatest preachers that's ever been since the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, listen, you've got to remember we are in wolf country. We are in wolf country. We, we don't... We don't mix with this world. Let me say, we are in the world. We are not of the world. We are in the world. We are not of the world. We have to work here. We have to play here. We have to be a part of, uh, of, uh, of the world uh, in the financial. Uh, we have to work a job. We have to pay taxes. We have to do all of that. But we are not of this world. When it goes against that right there, we back out. 
That's why I said something about Halloween. I'm just going to say this, and I'm done with it, okay? Maybe. I'm, I'm just going to say this, and I'm done with it. Listen, a Christian ought to have enough sense never to let their kid be a demon or a devil or anything that honors Satan. It's the most satanic holiday of the whole year, people. And if you don't know that, you have not done your homework. You are ignorant on the subject. There'll be kids and adults sacrificed to Satan Tuesday because of the satanic holiday of Halloween. We're scriptural. Now, if you want to give me some candy, I'll take it. If I want to give you some, I'll give you some candy. You want to give me kids candy? Fine. If you want to give out tracts, be a witness for God, that's, that's totally not against Scripture. It is against Scripture to participate in anything that's satanic. I shouldn't even have to say that. He said, oh, we just think it's fun. We just like the thrill. Yeah, you're honoring Satan, God's enemy and your enemy. Don't honor the devil. Don't honor the devil. We're in wolf country. There ought to be a difference in a sheep and a wolf. I mean, we got sheep and wolves clothing, brother. I mean, uh, I'm going to read you uh, a little statement here. This little book I've been, I've been studying Baptist history. And uh, I'm going to read you a statement from a renowned Baptist historian by the name of Henry Vedder. If you went to a lot of the seminaries, you would be taught this was a great man. And he taught that, that, that the... Um, the, there was no successionism. That means the church traced all the way back that it went underground and come out at the Protestant Reformation, Baptist began in 1600. That's a bunch of junk. That is not true. Anybody that tells you Baptist began in 1600 with, with uh, uh, that guy, what's that guy's name? Up there uh, is, is, is crazy. They have not done their homework. Listen. Are you listening? He said this. Some Baptists have betrayed into a similar search for proofs of antiquity, misled by the idea that such proof is necessitated by the promise that the gates of hell won't prevail against church. He says, Hades. And he said this. Listen to this quote. Evangelists and preachers of a certain type, me, are very fond of saying they believe the Bible from cover to cover and that they believe every word in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation except that type usually says revelations. Making fun of country preaching, you know, turning your Bible to revelations. Listen, smarty pants, Dr. Vetter, I'd rather not say it right and believe it. Amen. Than be able to say it like you say and not believe it, you heretic. He's dead and gone now, but he was a heretic. Listen to this, quote, Baptist historian, quote, there is no educated man living who really believes the Bible from cover to cover. That's a Baptist historian. There is no educated man that believes the Bible from cover to cover. Finish the quote. There is no half educated man who believes the Bible in that wholesale way. No man can make such a profession sincerely unless he has escaped education altogether. Listen, people, the most educated men I've ever met in my life believe the Bible from cover to cover. Not just the Bible, the King James Bible. From cover to cover. I know Dr. Ruckman had more education in his little finger than that guy had in his brain. And I know a lot more that had it. And I'm telling you, brother, that's what we're up against. We're in a day of when the devil's doing everything to corrupt. If you're not careful, you'll be saying, but I like that church because it's fun and they talk about my feelings and 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 my feelings, and my feelings are the most important thing at that church. You better, you better stick with the flock of sheep what you better do. Yeah. Amen. Your feelings ain't the most important thing in the world, you nut. Serving God. We're in wolf country. We are not ruling and reigning. Let me tell you something about wolves. Wolves don't, wolves kill for sport. They don't just kill when they're hungry. They'll kill a sheep just to be doing something. They're merciless. They have no mercy. They have no, I mean, that's, let me say about that Halloween thing. Did you know in Deuteronomy 10, 11, I told you maybe not. Uh, Deuteronomy 10, it said, there shall not be any one of you any one of you, you're a Christian, shall cause his son and his daughter to pass through the fire or that practices divination 
or enchantment or witchcraft or is a consulter with spirits, Ouija boards, seances, wizard trick, watching scary Halloween movies just because you think it thrills you, you're hooking up and supporting a demon. Now, we're in wolf country. The Lord said, you're in wolf country. Here's what I want you to do. Here's his advice. He said, first, I want you to be wise as a serpent. It's unusual that he might pick the serpent. Usually we associate a serpent with being evil and wicked, and most times that's the way it is, a picture of the devil through the Bible. But he, said, he didn't say be wicked as a serpent. He said be as wise as one. you got to admit them serpents are wise. I mean crafty, smart. The Bible said it was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. So the Lord was not in any way saying do anything wicked or wrong, but he said be wise as a serpent. A serpent has ears or ears or depth to sound carried by air. In other words, a snake can't hear something like my voice right here. They go off vibrations, vi vibes from their tongue. They'll stick their tongue out like that and they get vibes. Now the Lord said to us to be as wise as a serpent. When we hear something like the Jesus Culture Band, that's the most popular kind of Christian music in the country, Jesus Culture Band. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You ain't going to believe the stuff that we're going to study here in the next few months. It's crazy. You, when you can't, if you open, if you close your eyes and open them, you would think you was in a nightclub. Listen. If you're wise as a serpent, you get bad vibes off of that. Something inside says, this ain't right. Something inside says, wrong spirit. Their eyes are always open, even when they sleep. They watch, brother. They pay attention. They, they don't have songs that say, ye are my desire. I lavish my love on They Listen, they write Christian music nowadays, Christian music, and they, they write it so that a secular station can play that song and a boy can make it a love song to his girlfriend and it all fit. Said, listen to me, listen to me. It doesn't mention Jesus, just, you are my desire. I want to lavish my love on you. And don't to say who? I want to mess with me. If, if that song can be played on a secular station and translated as boy-girl love or man-woman love, you ought to be smart enough to know that ain't right. And if it's got the wicked jungle beat, you ought to have enough sense to know that ain't right. It ain't like, Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. That you know good and well. Don't act so dumb. You're not that dumb. Surely you're not that dumb. Please, Lord, don't let them be that dumb. Please. Listen, Marty and J-Man, when that music comes on like that, they'll say, that's the devil. That's the devil. I didn't teach them that. They heard me say it's the devil. But how do they know the difference in that music? When a girl's not dressed right, Marty, seven years old, said, oh, do you see her? And then you grown ladies act like, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. And you're hanging out. You look like a sack of potatoes walking down the street. That was not in the message, but it's, I'll throw that in there for free. Amen. Listen, people. We're, listen, we're to be wise as serpents. You say, people don't believe that way no more. That's exactly right. That's why I'm bringing it up to our attention. Lord, I'm worth this weird preaching. They make fun of Bible believers. They'll say like them poor stupid kids that go to that church, you say, what's two plus two? And they say, Jesus. They're making fun of us by teaching our kids about Jesus all the time. Oh, you go to one of them old hellfire churches, yeah? Yes, sir, we sure do. And if a preacher don't preach on hellfire, he's not a preacher. He's not preaching what Jesus said. He's not preaching what Jesus Listen, I know the whole world's getting It's supposed to be that way. We're in wolf country. The tongue, feet, the feet of a sheep is to be found in the footprint of the shepherd. 
like the shepherd's leading them, you'll see the footprint of the sheep right in the footprint of the shepherd. That's good advice right there. He said, be wise as a serpent, and lastly, harmless as a dove. We're not, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight literally. We, we don't believe it. You know, that's another thing about our good Baptist heritage. Baptists never preached and believed in a state church. One of the reasons our forefathers came over here from, from the other country was to escape a state church. That's where the state makes a law that one religion will be forced on everybody and you have to believe. That's what they believe in Muslim countries or you have to be this, or you have to be that. We preach you ought to be, we preach you have to be to be saved, but we don't force nobody to believe nothing. You have a conscience. You have, you have liberty of conscience, liberty, uh, soul liberty. That's what they called it. And you know what you need to understand? We are not in a physical battle. We don't go over there and fight other countries and stuff and say, you've got to believe like we do. No, no. We're harmless as doves. Doves don't start fights. Doves don't start fights. But we don't go to Halloween parties. We don't go to parties where they get drunk. We don't participate in smoking pot or taking pills to get high. We don't participate. We are, we are doves. We are harmless. We ain't going to hurt them, but we ain't going to participate with them. I was playing ball with a bunch of guys over there at the gym the other day, and they hardly ever do this. But one, of them, one of them said something a little off color. It wasn't terrible, but it was bad. And it was four of us, and they all three started laughing, and I went like this. I would, wouldn't dare to let myself laugh at that. They looked at me to see if I was going to laugh at it. Amen? I'm, I didn't want to fight. I didn't say, you say it again, I'll bust your nose. You know, but I'm not going to, I'm going to be harmless as a dove, brother. Now, if he said certain things, you might have to bust your nose. But, I mean, there comes a point. Just kidding, sort of. <laughs> I've seen a picture of a sheep, or a, go, a wolf had a sheep in its mouth, and the sheep's defenseless. And that sheep was almost dead, and the wolf was backing up a hill. You know how they'd go back, dragging that thing. And that poor little old sheep, poor little old sheep. And I thought, there's a sheep that got away from the flock and the wolf got it, dragging it up in the wood. And I thought, there was people come in my mind. People used to be right here in the flocks. And now they're out there on drugs, in rehab. In drug, and the wolf just got his teeth in them. I'm talking about Christian people. I'm talking about saved people. I've got a friend of mine, good friend of mine, who loved God, preached the word of God, shouted, old-fashioned shouting Baptist preacher. I mean, he, woo, he'd throw his hands up, hoot and holler, hurt his back. He went to the doctor and he got, he got on Oxycontin and Percocets and, and Vicodin and, and the next thing you know, he was taking them by the handfuls. And he called me and said, Brother Danny, I've lost my church. I've lost my ministry. I've lost, and I'm not judging him because, listen, you've got enough pain, you'll about do anything. To get, I'm, not, I'm not preaching against taking medicine if you need it. But he became a drug addict. And it's now it's like the wolf got him in, her, in his grips and his teeth. Don't you think here this morning that the wolf won't drag you right out of here and out there in some hell hole real quick. Me, you, any of us. Don't ever think yourself. That's why I preach to you to be faithful to church. Faithful. You need every service you can get. Your kids need every service they can get. Some of you missed some of that camp meeting. Lord in mercy, it might have been just exactly what you needed. Sheep don't know what to do. Sheep don't know how to protect itself. A sheep don't know where its next meal's coming from. So you know what a sheep does? They look to that shepherd. They look to that shepherd. They look to that shepherd for everything they get. They look to the shepherd. Are we going to eat today? They look to the shepherd. Are we going to be safe tonight? They're going to look to the shepherd. And that's exactly, he said, be harmless as doves, brother. You know what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look to him to take care of us. Look to him to watch out. You say, well, if I take this stand at work and I serve God and everything, I'm going to catch it. Look to the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord, kids. Serve God. Go to school and be a witness. Serve Jesus Christ. Honor God and keep looking to the shepherd. I want to uh, read you a little testimony here out of this same book about a martyr. A 
That's another way you know a fake church. You'll never hear the preacher preach on sin. What's a sin? You'll never hear him preach against... Tell me the last time you've heard a TV preacher preach against homosexuality or adultery or drunkenness for that matter. Or the judgment or eternal hell. You don't, listen to me, you don't identify a fake preacher by what he says. You identify him by what they won't say. You say, well, I've heard, I listen to him all the time and he says some good things. That ain't the way you tell a crook. When's the last time he preached on hell fire? You say, well, we, 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 the, our ministry is just encouraging people. Well, shut up and sit down and go home and get you an honest job. Sell vacuum cleaners. Ain't no ministry. That ain't no ministry that don't warn people. There's a hell. If there's not a hell, throw your Bible away. It's not true. If there is one, we better preach on it. A lady named Ann Askew. She was in Smithfield, England in 1546. This dear lady, kept in the heretic's tower, was placed on the rack and tortured. You know what a heretic was before the Reformation? And then parts after, somebody did not believe like the Catholic Church and did not believe that when the priest pronounced the blessing on that wafer, it actually became Jesus Christ. They teach that the the mass, you are receiving Christ through your mouth when that mass is blessed. That's what the Catholic Church teaches. And don't ever think they changed. They'll die down to get along with whatever country they're in. But the basic belief is still there. And she wouldn't do it. The inquisitors asked her opinion about the presence of Christ in the mass. Transubstantiation. She responded that she had often read in the scriptures that God made man, but had never read that man made God. Amen, Amen sister. Amen. Or nor did she think he ever would. Her persecutors then used instruments of cruelty. They beat this girl. Listen to me, ladies. Listen to me. They beat her and tortured her to reveal the identity of her brothers and sisters in Christ. She refused. Overcome with anger, her popish examiners ordered her to the rack. When the executioner refused, the papists rat themselves racked her with all their might till her bones and joints were almost plucked asunder. They took her out to burn her at the stake because she wouldn't denounce the Lord. She was unable to walk because they'd beat her bones so bad and they put her in a chair and carried her, and while chained to the post, she, offered, she was offered a pardon from the king if she would recant. The king said, if you'll just recant, take the mass, believe like we do, we'll set you free. And she told them she had not come there to deny her Lord and Master, and they burned her, and she died with a smile on her face. That's how she behaved in wool country. That's how they behave in wool country. Our forefathers by the millions went through stuff like that. It ain't going to kill us. One person told me, they said, well, uh, it, gas is high and I just don't come to church all regular. Because, Listen, people, what are we talking about? We're all rich in here compared to world standards. Man told this little boy a story one time, and I'm through. It's kind of good. Man told a story one time, this little boy, and he said, son, let me tell you a story. He said, once upon a time, there's a bunch of sheep out here in the, in, the, in the pasture. And one little sheep went down and found a hole in the fence. And he got down and snuck through that hole and got out and went down the countryside uh, playing. She's playing soccer. He said, he got out there and jumped around and enjoyed the sunshine. And he was free and having a big time. And about that time, the shepherd noticed a wolf coming across the hill toward that little sheep. And the shepherd dashed out there and run out there like that, and that little sheep was uh, had no idea the danger that it was in. And that shepherd took off across that field and grabbed that sheep like that, put it on his shoulder, and the wolf retreated into the woods, and he put it back in there where he got it. And that's how I picture how the Lord protects us, even when we don't deserve it. A lot of times he does. And you know what the little boy said? 
he thought of something that most people would never thought of. He said, did they fix that hole? Did they fix that hole? What he, you know what he's thinking? He thought, well, what's going to stop him from going out there again or another one? And I'm going to close with this question this morning. You going to fix that hole that you keep getting out? If you don't, some of you, the wolf's going to tear your life all to pieces. Is it drugs? Is it alcohol? Is it pornography? Is it some relationship you're in that you don't need? You going to fix that hole? If you don't, the wolf's going to tear your life to pieces. Better patch it up. You say, well, I like going out there and playing. You won't when you're in rehab and, and you and you got disease and you're, you've lost everything you've got. That's how sheep ought to behave in wolf country. Let's stand by our heads. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help every single one of us here this morning. Dear Lord, please, I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, touch us this morning. Dear God, do what needs to be done. Save that one which is lost. Encourage the saint of God. Lord, help us to know how to behave in wolf country. In Jesus' name. Our heads are still bowed.